Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and I will be reviewing Friday Night Smackdown-ish. And I honestly watched the, the whole show. I didn't skip, but a, a little bit. I skipped a little bit. But I need to breeze through this best that I can. I got a lot of, I got a lot to do, a lot to work on. And uh, I'm not getting paid for it. This, this is a labor of love, all this that I'm doing. It's a labor of love. Um, but you know what? You can help me get paid. Like, share, subscribe. If you're listening and not subscribed, please subscribe. Share this wherever you can. Uh, so let's get started. So main event, Jey Uso, he comes out to the ring, spends a lot of time boasting. So he's in the city and they all yeet for him to win Money in the Bank. And I had to know, Jay looked like he was trying way too hard to be something or someone unnatural to him. Like he was out there trying to be as tense and, and, and like he, tense, intensity, and just way more than he needs to be. I'm like, man, you know, you, you're going to bust a blood vessel. You need to chill. You got to have a relaxed version of yourself. Because if you like this all the time, the moment you're not, you're gonna look fake. That that's just my tip. Anyway, and then night, his music plays. He comes to the ring. Long intro as well. Knight comes in, cuts a good promo, gets the fans chanting, "Yeah!" Uso fights back with the yeet after moving his shades. So he moved the shades. It's all serious, you know. Uh, Carmelo Hayes comes out, bored me, but he's talking trash against both of them. He talks about them, and then he's cut off. I was like, okay. Chad Gable comes out and he's he's not dead after what happened to him a few weeks ago from the Wyatt Six. So, I, I mean, he's not dead. He talked about it and whatnot. And I'm going to tell you what bugged me the most. This is what bugged me. Voice, tone, cadence. You know, it doesn't help that he comes out talking like Kurt Angle. But he gets cut off. Andrade El Idolo, or Andrade the Idol, he comes out and talking trash to everyone, and I'm waiting for all of them to fight in the ring, and then they go to commercial. That's what I'm waiting on. So with a count of five, I assume six, yup, music. Drew McIntyre comes out to a large ovation that alters into CM Punk chants. He talks trash and holds up the bracelet saying, Punk isn't here, but his family's always with me. Okay. And I think that's brutal, seeing that that's what he took. You know, I'm like, okay, I get you, I got it. That's epic. Punk got beat down. He got his lumps, and he's gonna have to. Um, you have to do. You got to answer back. And after what Zimbo had told me, Drew McIntyre deserves to whoop the hell up out of Punk. And you know what? I'm gonna go with that. So Drew cuts them all down, and Andrade attacks Drew from behind. They all fight, and Drew's standing at the end until Jay and Knight. They take turns punching Drew to yeets and yes. Get rid of him. They go to commercial. Come back. Bailey and Chelsea talk trash. Piper Niven comes in, beats the hell out of Bailey, kind of, sort of. And then the Hills talk trash to get the last word. Tag team. Street Profits versus Pretty Deadly. I was like, I don't know what Pretty Deadly is wearing, but they need to stop. Street Profits won as predicted, but they did it epically. Powerbomb for the setup so that the defender can't move. Montez Ford with the, I can't really remember his, his first name. Uh, Montez Ford, all I wrote was Ford, with a crazy frog splash that threw him over the opponent. And then with little playful skill, he rolled backwards onto him, made the cover and win. I thought to myself, I wonder if I could do that in Fire Pro. If I could do that. In any case. Um... Tag team match, Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair versus Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. Standard tag match, and it went very well. This was a great tag team match on, you know, on, on a basic level. It was still really good. It, it was nice. I wish most tag matches would flow like this or better depending upon what match or title or whatnot is going on. You know, is it a main event match? It should be a bit better than this, but okay. The heels cut the ring off and worked Jade for a while. Dual tags were made and Belair was on the house, was a house of fire. 
didn't slow down at all. The Heels gained a hope spot for themselves, but that was killed, and the Faces got the win. At the end, the Faces cut a short promo, uh, a post-match promo, hailing back to the glory days of the NWA, which I thought was really cool. I thought I thought it was nice. It was really short, sweet, to the point. Move on. Classic style. I'm not going to lie. I, I, nostalgia, man. Those feelings of nostalgia. Kevin Owens, Randy Owen, uh, Orton, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and Cody Rose, they come out to the ring one by one. Cole says Cody has the most experience fighting the bloodline when Owens was doing it like a year or two before. Before. Owens was doing this way before Cody got there, but okay. And Kevin pointed out that he's been fighting them for the past four years. I'm like, Cody didn't start the bloodline stuff until like what, what two years ago two wrestlemanias ago roughly thereof so go on somewhere with that cole you, you you stupid bro just stop just replace this guy he's educating the fans into in, into being stupid we, we don't need that um kevin owens out promo them with a great story about his mom being in the hospital and she being the one who pushed him to obtain the goal to be a wrestler and go on to kick the hell out of the bloodline. Uh, and I was like, if the fans paid any, if the fans and WWE paid any attention to the work, the bloodline only takes a beating. Uh, oh man, unless Jacob is there. So that's one ass kicking the bloodline didn't get. The bloodline was. The bloodline has won with Tama. When Tama arrived, they won, right? Okay, but it was like a DQ, so it was just a beat down. Okay. Tonga Loa, he arrived, ate it in a victory. Okay. Jacob Fatu showed up and stopped an in-ring jumping and was a one-man wrecking crew. The only truth when the bloodline has gotten was beating on Paul Heyman, and they didn't really win that because his denial of Sokoa was not changed by the beating. He still will not acknowledge him. So they lost that too. Roman Reigns could easily come back and point all this out with his new crew. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. And I, I hope I hope Roman's okay. You know, having to battle his 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 illness and his own body trying to jack him up. That's messed up. But a lot of us is going through that. I know I am. So next we get Bailey versus Piper Niven. Champion comes out first, but it's okay because she issued the challenge. But I'm like, we've seen this match, and it's gonna be the same. But anyway, Niven hit a boss man slam, didn't even try to pin, but opted to shout at Bailey. That let me know right then that that what the outcome was gonna be. Yeah, it's not for the belt. It, they, they didn't say it was for the, the belt. You know, so get the win. That's how I see it. You know, make yourself a little elevated. Niven is a Niven hits a senton, and then went for the pin for a two count. Niven helped Bailey get a rope ran bulldog on her, and then rolled out the ring. It was a nice move. Right coming up, Piper swung Bailey, uh, Bailey's feet slamming her hand to the post. I thought that was okay. I've seen it before, but that was the first time I've seen it look good. And then some blonde woman come out and seems to distract Bailey a bit. There are other participants for Money in the Bank in the front seat. So now I'm waiting for them to rush the ring and attack everyone with maybe Niven standing strong at the end. So Naomi throws Chelsea. And I forgot Naomi was even out there. She came out there with Bailey. Naomi throws Chelsea into the barricade, which looked really good. And then all the women started rushing into a melee. In the ring, Bailey evades a Vader bomb, hit the snapmare driver for the win. After the match, Nia Jax comes out, attacks Bailey, beats her down, get a few leg drops. Then someone they pronounced as E Chen attacked Nia with a kendo stick and ran her off. And I was like, E Chen, I was like, it's almost like they're just trying to pick on an Asian name. Like to say her the name is Itching. Let's just play on that. E Chen, Itching, you know, man. That's what it sounds like, and it's annoying, and I don't like it, so I'm moving on. So now we get to the uh, uh, double main event, I suppose. Because we got this in the pre-tape. And 
we got DIY Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa versus A Town Down Under. Why, why is this thing correct like that? Because I didn't write that. A Town Down Understand. It's, what is up with this? I'm using Libre Office. Uh, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. So I don't know these people, and it bugs me how Waller and Theory look a little bit too much alike. I'm like, man, so I had to figure out who had the beard, who didn't, or who had something. I was like, I just, I, I, I don't watch this like this. I don't watch them like that. And I'm using, and I kind of got the screen a little minimized. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's going to look the way it looks. It's all kind of, you know, old Kung Fu, Kung Fu theater stretched out looking. Uh, but what I, in my notes, I put a, uh, Waller put himself in a destroyer and it looked bad because it like he could have, you know, broke his own neck. I mean, he put himself in it. You could see it, you know, but oh well. But then there's eight minutes left in the match and they do a spot that would be best served as a too hurt spot or injury where Waller can't help his partner and lose. Seems best that way. Eight minutes left means he'll get up soon enough. I guess I'm just too exposed to AEW and other stuff where it's like, I took a destroyer and now 15 to 30 seconds later, I'm, I'm back in the game. But it won't like that. So I'm, I'm glad. I applaud her. They did well. Theory has to get it, has to go it alone for some dumbass reason. Cole says a series of pin attempts is a wrestler trying to steal it. Defenders, not to, but the, the challenges. Um, and it was Gargano. He kept putting pin attempts on Theory. And he's like, and he almost stole it. And I was like, what? And I, why is he so stupid? Talking about Michael Cole. We all rarely make mistakes, but this is habitually intentional. <sighs> anyway, Waller, who is severely ailing, yanks Champa from the apron to prevent the tag. Uh, now, that can make someone look like a warrior, what Waller did. Yeah, he's messed up, but he pulled it together just enough to help his partners. That was a great spot. Something that small, doing something like that, they're the, they're the heels. I get that. But man, that, that, was, a, that was a gut check babyface move. Just, just saying. Or, I don't like you that much. Heel move. So, it works either way. It's all about your perception. The champions are back with Waller on the apron, but still reeling a bit. But it doesn't help after a miscue and the challenges hit the, uh, the shatter machine for a two count. Not sure about that. The fans were up and they hit a legit finisher with no A from the already heavily damaged Waller to kick out, but he did. So I don't know. I, I can't really agree with that one. You know, but being that it's a title match and main event, it's passable. I give it that. It's passable. There's a, there are things where you just got to let it go because this is where you put your all into it. You, you do what you can to hold on. You know, you go above and beyond the normal call of duty to hold on to that belt. So that's that's the whole point. Waller hit an awesome somersault Tamakaze on Champa after being saved from a pin attempt, which I was like, my goodness, that looked nice. Gargano saves Champa at the last second, and the fans are not only way up, but I am enjoying this match, despite all the pausing I got to do to type. The challengers get their finish on Waller by the Rope, so I was waiting for the save. Still, Theory gets his partner's leg under the, not yeah, gets his leg under, um, and yet touching the bottom rope. This is how you do a save, and it's not illegal. So there was no need for Theory to duck out of the way unless there's a tag rule I've missed. I probably have missed the rule about this or forgot it. It just seems logical that if a partner can attack the pinning wrestler or yank his partner free. This should be allowed with no issue. Gargano gets the Border City stretch on Waller, and Theory dives in, grabbing his partner's hand, trying to block the tap out. Champa dives in on Theory and applies the same hold. What was now look? What was masterful was Theory was in pain, but he tried to hold on to his partner, 
but he couldn't as he had to worry about his own sake. So that just mm, chef's kiss. That was nice. Now, granted, it didn't last long, but you got to look. You got to look. You'll see it. It's like, I'm trying to hold on. I can't. This hurt too much. I got to let go. I got. You got to deal with yourself, man. I hurt. I hurt. So Gargano scores a submission victory. And I guess they're using Lucha rules because traditionally North American rules prohibit a dual submission or double team submission to finalize the match. South American rules is more of a free for all. So, yeah. But still, I had to note that the way they look after winning makes me feel strongly for DIY and I don't even know them at all. You know, I don't even know them. But I'm like, man, y'all, y'all kind of got my feels a bit. That was some great tag team effort right there. And I had to wrote, I had to write, it was a damn good standard four-star match. Four-star match, that was good. The lowest I could possibly give it would be three and a quarter stars. That's the lowest I could give that. You know? It's, it was missing a lot of tag team elements that could have pushed it to a five-star match. And it could have done a five-star match within 15 minutes. It's just about how you do it, how you go about it, your pacing, and the investment in it from the fans and the storyline and whatnot to help build the emotions towards it. You know, but that was still good. That was still a great match. So then we end with bloodline business. So Solo Sokoa talks about Roman Reigns. Uh, but what in the world is this autocorrect? It didn't wrote Roman. Rom Kane, R O M K A I N. Sokoa talks about there's no space. Rom Kane reigns. Uh, I guess that's I guess that's Roman Reigns' little brother, Rom Kane. So Sokoa talks about Roman Reigns being too weak to defend the family, too weak to keep the belt, and with such weakness, he cannot be the tribal chief. Solo has taken leadership by force and issued a direct challenge to Roman that if he wants it back, he's welcome to try. So, to me, to me, this is like the battle for NWO Japan, you know, uh, by Keiji Muto and Chono Masahiro. After Chono submitted Keiji in the STF, Chono's NWO was disbanded due to WCW losing the rights, their, their rights over and stuff after it was bought out and he formed Team 2000. So that's what this reminds me of. It reminds me of that. And the fact that Solo Sokoa, I hope nobody misses, misses this, that Solo Sokoa has said all this in front of the Tongans, Jacob Fatu. He, this is a declaration. This is war. He's, like, he's going to get that undisputed belt back. That's what he's saying. He's saying that these athletes, these wrestlers, these Tongans and Samoan are with me. So that's a clear division right there. So when Roman comes back, none of these guys are on his side. None of them. So sometimes this is going to branch into a different feud at some point. And I don't think The Rock is really going to be a part of it. He's going to have something to do with it. Then he's going to be gone after about three weeks or so. But he's going to come out, talk, 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 talk. A little bit of fight here and there. A little scuffle here and there. And then it's going to be a match. And then he's going to be gone. And then they're going to just go on with their thing. That's what I'm assuming. But I'm, I'm just, I, I don't know how I fully feel. I like the way how, I like how uh, Sokoa's delivery was of this. I like that. It was good. It was good. I just, I just don't know. How can I say this? I don't know if I buy them sticking at his side when he fails because Solo Sokoa is not known for winning. He's not known for winning. And they're trying to repack. They're trying to repackage him, showing all of his victory, uh, boasting, attacking others. But they never show him getting the win. They never show him holding up a belt of any kind. So he's going to have to start getting something. They still got a ways to WrestleMania. They can do something with Sokoa. It's, it's, it's hard taking them serious. But at the same time, I'm hoping that they do something with them. I want to take them serious. It's just difficult. So with that said, this has been Central for CR Wrestling Commentary for Friday Night Smackdown-ish. 
And with that, I want you all to be cool, be chill, be safe. And I'll see you next time.